Just a couple of quick observations that, that are clearly just flat out wrong. Um, talk about reliability, um, opinions. That's why we submitted the binders that we've submitted to you. Talk about the methodology. Every one of our experts tells you in great detail what's wrong with the purported methodology that their folks utilized. Um, Mr. Norman continues, and in every single one of these cases, he continues to conflate the requirements in, the, in a courtroom with what is reliable in a, a, a public meeting. He says, our experts weren't here in person. Well, candidly, because you know what? We don't have millions of dollars. Our folks don't have the economic resources that they have. Uh, it's a false statement to say our experts weren't on, on site. Mr. LaRue spends a great deal of time and, and set forth in there about what he observed. And the most fundamental reason why our folks weren't on site is because they weren't permitted to be on site. So, you know, you want to talk about sitting there kind of misrepresenting or misleading the folks. Um, Mr. Norman sits there and says, well, the county uses the implant model, so therefore you shouldn't uh, question that. Anybody who's used any kind of computer program, any kind of model, knows that it is so dependent upon the inputs that it's the proverbial garbage in, garbage out. And so if you don't provide the right data in, turn, you know, in the input, then you're not going to get the right data out, output. Um, Talk about the fact that our folks didn't provide affidavits. Yeah, they've sat there and told you they've put their reputations. Every single one of these folks has done exactly what Mr. Norman's accusing um, us of not doing, which is they're putting their reputations on. I, I ask you to look at the motivations behind each one of these experts who has come to testify and contrast those who are doing it independently, truly independently, as opposed to the people who have made it abundantly clear their sole reason for existence is to make money and to permit and site landfills. He then sits there and says, um, well, you know, noise study, worst case, et cetera. That's not true either. I mean, please look very closely at the information we provided to you. It, and then he tries to minimize the impacts to one neighbor and says, well, it's just a small parcel. No, that small parcel that they used, not us, they used as their model is 400 acres, okay? And that's Dr. Fike. You'll see in the, in the presentation, we don't have time to sit there and, and read um, into, into the record, but it's in the record. His observations, his concerns as it relates to his property, we also sit there and tell you as the noise and the traffic study, again, that uh, the impacts to both him and the, the um, residents on the west side and the other side, um, he continues to try to conflate the conditions and say, well, they're voluntary conditions. But then in the very next breath, he says, quote, only future county commissions can change those conditions. And we all know what happens if you sit there and let the camel's nose in under, the, under the tent. You know, so to, in the very next breath, that just makes no sense because then he sits there and says, well, EPD can handle this because they issue consent orders all the time. Think about the logic of that statement. If they have to issue consent orders all the time and take enforcement actions and levy significant fines, which by the way, they're, they're not, then what does that mean? It means that these folks are violating the very rules and regulations that they contend they're gonna voluntarily comply with. That just may, I mean, folks, that makes no sense whatsoever. I'll, I'll stand, as he said, stand behind the uh, opinions and the facts that are in there, yes, we stand, I stand behind every single one of those. What was his biggest argument? In 30 years, you'll have a solid waste management system that basically is the envy of others. What do you need a solid waste management system that's the envy of others when you've got a perfectly functioning system right now? And you can sit there and say, why are you going to take waste from Six, that would take you 685 years to accumulate. What real benefit is it to this county? There is none. He then sits there and says, well, you know, they looked at uh, 100 miles. Well, that's not real, realistic. We really should be looking at 50 miles. Fine, look at 50 miles. What did I tell you? And it's demonstrated fact. 
16 landfills, eight transfer stations within a 50 mile radius. There is no need for this landfill. He's threatening you again, saying if you don't approve, you're violating our constitutional rights. Well, I contend that these folks' constitutional rights are every bit as important, significant, and, and than their property rights. These folks have the right to quiet enjoyment, to health, safety, and welfare of their property. That's the analysis. Again, I don't want to have bat battling lawyers here. We set forth literally every single legal standard you have to meet. I suggest you consult with your attorneys, and they will sit there and confirm that our assessment of the law is correct as opposed to that of Mr. Norman's. I'll leave the remaining nine minutes for our other folks. Thank you.